In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. So this evening, as you know, we have one topic, a prayer rule, and we have three reflections. I'm giving the first reflection, which is on an individual prayer rule. My prayer rule, uh, not me specifically, but each of us can say that, my prayer rule. Um, Father Peter will be giving the second talk on a reflection of a prayer rule from a parish standpoint, and then Mother Gabriella will give, be giving us the monastic perspective, and I'm sure tying together how that informs both our individual prayer rules and our parish prayer rules. Every moment of a Christian's life should be connected to or referred to God. You would agree? Yes? In everything we do, God should be remembered, praised, thanked, and asked for help. Those are really the fundamentals of prayer. He's our life. He's our light. He's our salvation. He is our friend if we want him to be. Without him, we can do nothing. And yet, without our voluntary effort and our own energies, whatever he wants for us will never happen. There will come a day when we stand before him, and if we have not prepared ourselves to know him, how lost we will be when that day comes. So how do we prepare ourselves? How do we become a friend of God? How do we learn to enter into conversation with him? How do we learn to pray? Well, we know one thing, we need discipline. Now I'm going to tell this joke. So there was a guy wandering the streets of New York City. Um, he was a tourist, and he was looking for all the famous places to go, and he um, wanted to see Radio City Music Hall. I realize this joke may be a little bit dated, actually, because the, those of us who are older know that's where the great musicians played. Um, maybe they still do. Um, but he was looking for how to, he, he couldn't find Radio City Music Hall. So he asked someone on the street that looked like a New York native, how do I get to Radio City Music Hall? And the man looked at him like, doesn't everyone know? And he said, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> and that is the way it is with prayer. That is how we learn to talk to God. We must practice. We must have discipline. And we know that if we are to accomplish anything worthwhile in our lives, we must discipline ourselves, we must have a rule, we must have a program set out in front of us. Otherwise, the devil will surely distract us, as he is trying to do all the time, and he will direct our attention to ourselves and not to him. So it makes sense, in this world, we must make a commitment to prayer. We must have a rule of prayer. Most of us immediately think about our prayer life, and we think morning prayers, evening prayers, that's good. And we're thinking rightly, because those are the fundamentals. We will also think as Orthodox Christians, or I should say as liturgical Christians, because the Roman Catholic Christian would do this. Uh, I would think that an Episcopal, an Anglican, anyone from the liturgical tradition would be used to doing this. You would look for prayers in a prayer book. And, and indeed, we have a number of prayer books here this, this evening, and most of us have a prayer book. Hopefully, it's not like many Bibles that are sitting collecting dust, um, but it is used and the pages are worn. My favorite one, my son's dog got a hold of it, um, so I have another favorite one now. So we use prayers in a prayer book, and this is not only good, but it's necessary, for the saints knew how to pray. And if I were to come to you, each one of you individually, and ask you how to pray, you might stumble around giving an answer. And you would certainly, if you are somewhat mature in your practice, would have discovered some things. But the saints, that's why they're saints. 
they knew how to pray. Their prayers not only anticipate and express what's in our hearts, but they also teach us how to pray. They give us a good example in structure and in content. And when we pray these prayers also, we are joined with a church who has used these prayers for years, centuries, millennia in some cases. We enter into the same prayer life that those who came before us entered into, and we are joined with them in solidarity in our prayer life. And yes, we should seek our spiritual father's advice or our father confessor's advice always in these matters. What is the prayer that fits me? But a prayer will consist of much more. It's prayers before and after meals. It's prayers before beginning any task. It's prayers before reading the scripture. And certainly spontaneous prayers are wonderful, but there are prayers that are handed down to us from the ages for every one of these things. But a prayer will consist of much more. There's crossing ourselves when we arise from sleep in the morning, when we start out on a journey, when we arrive at our destination. In fact, we cross ourselves, if possible, whenever we remember God. A thought of our children, our parents, our friends, someone in need, someone who is joyful, someone who is filled with sorrow, someone who is alone. We cross ourselves when we remember them in a prayer. These are all prayers, and we cross ourselves offering up in a way our whole being, not just our mind, but our body as well to God in prayer. But a prayer will consist of much more. Kissing is how we express love. And so we kiss our icons and our crosses. We kiss each other, and we teach our children from infancy, and it is such a beautiful thing to see a young couple with young infants bringing them to church, taking them in front of the icons, uh, speaking to them gently, softly, with love, not, without fo- not with force, but with patience to direct them to the icon and kiss and let them see by example. But a prayer will consist of much more. Prostrations, silence, the name of Jesus on our lips and in our mind and our heart at every moment possible. It's taking the time to stay in touch with people that we don't see on a regular basis and bring them joy in knowing that someone is thinking of them. That's a prayer. I used to have a guy that I worked with many years ago. Um, He was from Germany. And... uh, He was a close friend here, but when he went back to Germany, with me, it's out of sight, out of mind. Um, That's why my son does the same thing to me. From Germany, I would receive these postcards from him through the years. Austria, we're on vacation. Here, there. um, And it, it just struck me every time I received one of those cards. This man took the time to write a postcard go to the post office, get a, post, get, a, get a stamp, put it on it, stick it in a box, and send it to me. I can't think of a greater prayer than the time that he gave me out of his life. And so prayer is giving our time to other people. It's setting aside time of the day to read the scriptures, the fathers, the lives of the saints, all of these should be incorporated in our prayer rule. It's taking time to read the list of names in the church bulletin for those who are sick and suffering or at home and unable to get out. It's remembering at the end of the day all the people and events that you encountered, especially the difficult ones and giving thanks to God for them and searching in your heart and your mind for what it was that you were to learn in that difficult encounter. It's keeping track of the things that you want to bring to your next confession. 
It's the time spent with a loved one when you think you have more important things to do. It's making your bed. <laughs> it's sending a card. It's taking half of your day in a snowstorm to be with someone because they're important to you. It's coming to vespers, matins, the hours, to weekday liturgies. These are all components of my, an individual's prayer rule. These are all things that shape us. These are all things that train us. These are all things that condition us to be the people that God wants us to be. <clears throat> and these are all the things that prepare us for that final day when we will meet him face to face to converse with him so that we might know how to speak to and to listen to our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.